the major storm gathering for a coastal strike. Hurricane Earl, now a massive Category 4 hurricane, is pushing a wall of wind and water across Puerto Rico and towards the mainland, with sustained winds of 135 miles per hour. Major East Coast cities, including New York and Boston, fall squarely within the storm's so-called cone of uncertainty. Well, how bad could damage from this hurricane be? Sam Champion has our report. Hurricane Earl jumped two categories today, a Category 2 at breakfast time, by dinner a powerful Category 4. Only 15% of all hurricanes will ever be that powerful. Its track also shifted slightly to the west, increasing the chances that Earl will swipe the east coast from the outer banks all the way up to Cape Cod as it moves north. And FEMA is watching it all, monitoring Earl's every move, today urging states from North Carolina to New England to prepare for possible evacuations. Earl has been lashing the islands in the Caribbean as it gains strength, knocking down trees, causing power outages, and creating dangerous surf. This as the East Coast is still feeling the effects of Hurricane Danielle. Over the weekend, at least two people died as a result of powerful riptides caused in the wake of Danielle. I wouldn't even go out there. It's too rough today. Very, rough. very, very rough. Under careful supervision, I tested the waters and got a taste for what it's like to be caught in a riptide. Even though I was swimming right to the beach, I was pulled out hundreds of feet from the shore in less than five minutes. East Coast lifeguards, including those in New Jersey, were on high alert today after more than 100 people were rescued from rough surf over the weekend. Hurricane Danielle was coming up the East Coast and uh, as it headed towards us, it pushed a lot of large waves. Saturday, the waves were uh, substantial. We had uh, at least 40, we think, uh, assists or rescues on Saturday and maybe as many as 70 yesterday. Tonight, Hurricane Danielle is far offshore but still close enough to stir up these waters. When we get uh, storm surge, storm waves like we had, then we could be very busy and it's, it's all consuming. And now Earl is on his way and could threaten one of the busiest beach weekends of the summer. And just like the rest of us, all the lifeguards can do is watch and wait. It is still too early to tell if Earl will actually make landfall on the East Coast. There's a powerful cold front moving in from the Northwest, which could keep Earl out in the Atlantic as it makes its way north. There's get, there'll, be, there'll be swells uh, yeah. regardless. Yeah, the, the lifeguards are going to be busy regardless. Here at the National Hurricane Center in Miami, hurricane trackers are closely monitoring all the incoming data in order to create the various models that can warn people about the path of this ever-changing and now very dangerous hurricane. Now the computers are reaching the skill where we can run very sophisticated models to come up with a better forecast of where the hurricane will be. The Hurricane Center is part of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, and it gathers much of its data using these. Hey folks, looks like we got uh, one bump ahead here. Hurricane Hunters, planes that fly right through the storm gathering precise measurements that allow for greater accuracy when it comes to predicting just where a hurricane is headed. The strides that have been made in the last several decades have to do with track forecasting. We get better and better at where the storm is going. Only limited progress in how strong it's going to be when it gets there. The good news is all this technology is making for better hurricane forecasts. As a result, three-day forecasts are now as accurate as two-day forecasts were during the 90s. But the long-term forecast, four and five days out, is still tricky business. And that's why keeping an eye on Earl as it strengthens in the warm waters of the Atlantic is so important in the coming days. For those who think a hurricane can't strike New England, think again. These are pictures of Hurricane Bob. In 1991, Bob passed within 35 miles of the Carolina coast, clipped New York's Long Island, and made landfall in Rhode Island with 100 mile an hour winds a Category 2 hurricane. I'm Sam Champion in Miami Beach for Nightline.